Hey everybody, I wanted to quickly as possible show you what it might be like when you get this package and you put it into your scene. Uh, so as always, I suggest you do this in a new project. Um, I You can absolutely use these in your project, but uh, all these substances uh, take up a lot of um, processing power when you decide to work with them. So it's generally a good idea, since there are so many of these, um, to create your textures in a new project, export them with the objects and the prefabs into your current project that you're working on. So um, these are the substance share files. We're going to have some generators as well, but for now we'll just use those. When you get the prefabs and procedural materials, they're going to be all these uh, Unity packages. So um, and the same reason there's a lot of substances here and it takes a while uh, for Unity to import them. So rather than doing it all at once, which could crash Unity, you're going to have to do it one at a time or a few at a time. Uh, so let's just open up some of these by um, double clicking them. All right, so that took uh, about two two minutes. Uh, I sped through it. So now we have the doors here, and you'll find the prefabs uh, in the main file, and then uh, all the procedural materials in the next uh, child directory. So there's a, a handful there. So I'm going to do that with some floors and um, uh, and a wall as well. All right, so let's work on uh, some floors here. Uh, we're going to take this floor 5x5, five five. it's a very simple object. It has on it already one um, material, and that's the single plane right here in this material generators. Uh, these are outside of the SFB dungeon package, just so you know, because there's things that can be used in multiple packages from us. They're not specific to the dungeon. So that's black right now because uh, I have this clicked. I'm going to unclick that. Um, and it's going to show up either either white or red. There it is white. So white indicates that there's one material that you can put onto this. Um, and so we need to go down here and add some custom material inputs. But in order to do that, we need some custom material. So I'm going to go into my substance share folder here. There will be more generators for you to use. Um, and so you could use those if you'd like as well. Uh, I'm going to choose one of the uh, just something something simple, maybe. Uh, all right, this looks like a decent enough thing for the demo, so I'm just going to pull this over onto the um, object. Now, this is not how we're going to use this prod this uh, this material, but the first thing I want to do is make it look like a dungeon. So I'm going to create a light, just do a point light, bring it up a little bit, and maybe off to the side, uh, and then we're going to turn off the directional light. And in our lighting panel, we're going to bring our ambient intensity down, remove our skylight. Um, and in our camera, we will turn this to be black. So this is more what it will look like in an actual game environment. All right, so now we can really see um, our material here. Now, each one of these materials has options. Most of them will have these main options that you can change the hue, saturation. Um, you can play with them. This one obviously starts off pretty gray, so we'll up the saturation so you can kind of see the effect it has. Um, so play with them to see what works for you. Uh, often they also have surface dirt, damage, special effects. Some of them at the bottom will have more options. This one just has an option for the roughness value of, of this metal. So you can choose how rough you want it to be. Um, so I'll make it somewhat rough because I'm going to add some dirt to it. Uh, so we'll just up the amount. And for now I'm going to uh, up change the color to something that I can actually see. We'll up the edge dirt as well. Uh, let's see. So it's starting in the cracks and then it goes out like that. There we go. So I want a little dirt on the outside. It's definitely some dirt in the cracks. I'm going to uh, make the roughness uh, uh, more rough. And you can see it here how the light doesn't reflect off the dirt as it does at the, the floor. If we brought it down, it does. So I'm going to turn that back to a dirt color, which I have pre saved right here. So now we have. Uh, the reflections not reflecting off the dirt as much as it did before. So that's just a simple modification we could do. We could add more with damage and stuff, but we're not going to do that for this one. Next, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to export uh, this material. Make sure generate all outputs is set. Then go up here to this gear icon in the top right and say export bitmaps. We're going to choose original alpha channel. Uh, we'll go into our 
uh, base materials and we're going to create a new folder. We'll call this uh, metal plate floor one and we'll choose that. Now Unity is going to export those files to our disk. It shouldn't take more than a, a second and then if we leave Unity and come back in it'll import all the files. Now you'll find that right here in, in this uh, whoops, in this folder uh, and we have a bunch of maps. We don't actually need all these. Um, they all get exported, but we don't need them all. So we're going to delete the albedo, keep the albedo opacity. We're going to delete the emissive because this has no emissive. We're going to delete the height map because for this there's no real height information that we want to use. So we'll save the disk space. We're going to delete the metallic, keep the metal rough, and we're going to de delete the roughness. So let's delete those right now. If you wanted to, you could change these to a PNG on your disk as well. Uh, right now they take up something like 16 megabytes each or something because they're target files, completely uncompressed. Change these to a PNG if you want to save some disk space. The normal map we want to change, we want to make sure it's a texture. Sometimes Unity will export this as a normal map and automatically apply that. So you want to double check that the, tech, that the normal map is set as a texture, not as normal map. Next we'll go back to our material generator, back to our single plane and bring that onto the object. And then down here we're going to populate these uh, input fields with those maps from over here. Um, whoops. So our albedo opacity goes in the albedo, normal goes in the normal, metal rough goes in the metal rough, and the ambient occlusion goes in the ambient occlusion. If you don't have a height or emissive or you don't want to use those, just leave it blank. Uh, and then at the top, click the custom material button. And now I'll use those nodes in this uh, object. So one thing we want to make sure, check the invert custom, uh, custom normal rather. Uh, sometimes this needs to be clicked and sometimes it does not. So you want to look at your object and try to fi figure out which one it needs to be for yours. I believe in this case it should not be clicked because this looks kind of like it uh, has an issue with the seams and the bolts. There we go. And now it looks more like those are actual um, little divots in the ground rather than uh, risen bits. So now we've got the um, the thing, the the material in there. If we want to do more uh, updates, we could. Um, we could add damage here. We could add special effects like uh, water, which is always a fun effect. All right. So now we have a little bit of water. On this uh, on this material here, I kind of like that look for this dungeon that's going to have metal floors. Um, so when we're done with all that, we do the same thing as we did before. Go back and make sure the X generate all outputs is selected, and then in the top corner, export the bitmaps. This time I'm going to save it in a different area. This is going to be final um, final um, uh, textures, and then a new folder we'll call this metal floor one and we'll choose that and export those maps. All right, now Unity has imported those. So we've got final textures, metal floor one. Again, we don't need the albedo, the emissive. We're gonna ignore the height, the metallic, and roughness. We'll delete those. We do want the normal map to be set as a normal map now. And then we're gonna create a material. We're gonna call this metal floor one. And then we're gonna bring these maps into our material. Our albedo opacity, ambient occlusion down here, metallic roughness, and our normal map. And then we'll simply drag this onto the object. All right, so now let's uh, now let's do some uh, work on the walls. So I'm going to go to my uh, walls single up here. Now this is a whole bunch of walls uh, by various unit sizes. I'm going to go for the um, maybe 5 by 3 walls. No, 5 by 4. I'll bring that in here. Now you'll notice it already has this texture on it. And that is because we have the single plane material attached to the walls. Um, so if we go back to our material generator and click on single plane, turn off custom material, they'll go back to white. So now we need a material to use for these walls. 
Uh, so we'll, let's go back to our substance share and find something that we like for a wall. Healing paint looks good. So I'm going to bring these onto here just so I can see what it looks like. It's metal underneath, so that goes with my metal floor pretty decently. So I can change a few things. Now again, you can change all the things on, on our generic uh, modifications. But underneath the SFX tab, there's the specific to this uh, texture modification. So I'm going to change first the, um, the paint color. So that I like that a little bit better. And the dirt color, I'm going to make my standard dirt, which I have pre-saved. That way it matches the dirt on the ground. Alright, looks like we can't change the position of these um, peeled parts, but that's okay. We'll just leave it as such. I kind of like this. I like it enough for our level. So I'm going to do the same process we did before. All right, um, now let's bring uh, back our single plane. The custom material if it's not already set. Ah, and of course I want to make sure to convert that normal. There we go, that's much better for the normals. And now we also need to remove the water, because we had water from our last usage. And if we had any other changes, you want to remove those as well. So if you had any dirt uh, or ground or ceiling dirt or that you don't want here, or any changes in the hue, saturation, and all that, you want to change that back as well. So now I'm going to add some ground dirt um, right here. Uh, so again, let me change this color to something that's more easily seen and we'll just bring up the height to see what happens. Now one of the options here is uh, that the ground dirt masks metal. The dirt, of course, is not metal, so if you select that, then it'll mask uh, any metal parts like this wall. So now that we are set with that, let's change the color. There we go, so now we have dirt on the wall at the base to ma make it match the uh, dirt on the floor as well. I find there's a drastic difference between um, the export uh, material and the one that you were working on. You might want to check that your final uh, check the bumpiness options here. Um, all the options here. So we're going to bring down the bumpiness a little bit. There we go. So that's more like what we had created originally. So we'll bring that onto both walls. All right then. Um, I want to show you the doors, our various doors. There are a bunch of them, three different uh, shapes, square, uh, arch, and pointed, and each one has a preset um, uh, design to them, a texture that you can either just use as is or modify. So I'm going to modify um, these ones, but let me just look at them real quick. Let it load. All right, I'm going to modify this door square with the window. So let's bring that in and look at it real quick. That's cool. Uh, and so the door, um, if you bring the door square C, that's the one with the window. If you bring up that, you'll see it has a whole bunch of options. Um, it has a lot of the uh, uh, the sections, the areas sectioned off here. The custom frame, each board. There are ten different boards. So if you want to change the color of some of the boards and not the other different types of boards, you could do that. Uh, the bars and, and so on. Well, I, what I want to do, though, I want to make this door match um, the wall. Uh, so I'm going to just bring that up to the wall so we can kind of see what we're talking about. Uh, I want to bring this blue material onto the door. So what I'm going to do uh, with the door selected I'm going to go down to the bottom, and we have all these, oops, all the way at the bottom, we have all these import options right here. So we don't need the frame. So all the 10 boards, I'm going to bring my 
uh, from the base materials, I'm going to take the, uh, uh, the metal wall one and bring these over. All right, so that's much nicer. I like this look, but I still have these horizontal lines there. I'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom of my options, above the inputs. And for this texture masking, this removes the ambient occlusion and the normal from for these sections. So I'm going to click these for each of the boards, and that will remove the ambient and the normal for all the um, horizontal lines on the boards. All right, so now we have a solid door there. Um, uh, so the same thing is with the rest. I'm going to make sure generate all outputs is checked. I'm going to export these maps. I think there might be an issue with uh, Unity 534. This is the quote unquote stable version. Uh, it seems to me, this is new, that the normal maps are extra bumpy, uh, much more bumpy than they usually are. I mean, I've been doing this with these this process for a while. I have not come across them so bumpy. I think I'm going to have to change it again. But let's bring this over to our door window, door frame. Sure enough, sure enough, it's extra, extra bumpy. Um, so I'm going to go back to my normal map. I'm going to lower that tremendously. Now we also have these big hinges, and uh, I want to. I want these to be part of the material, as you can see they are now. Um, so if you go back to your uh, door material. We have our door square hinges. So I'm going to bring those on. Um, clearly that looks much better, so I'm going to export these as well. Alright, now we have our completed door and we need to put it in a wall. So I'm going to go back to my uh, prefabs and procedurals and we need the walls with the door, so archways, wall archways. So we'll open that file. Wall archways. Um, we have various, these are the depth of the heart archway, so these ones are going to be very thin. Uh, and then half a unit, one unit, and then uh, five units. Oops, there we go, five units. So these are for long hallways. So we're going to take, um, we'll just take uh, maybe the one depth and we need the square. There we go. So we'll just bring that into our scene. And let's position it where we want it. All right, so now we've got a room back there and we need to put our door right in the middle. The door can rotate to open and close, so you can animate that in, in your game to have it automatically open and close. So we'll keep it closed for now. Now, the wall here uh, takes the same material as the other walls. So we'll just select our, select our material, just drag that on to the wall, and now we have a blue painted wall there as well. And it also goes on the back. Have them be seamless, so they fit together perfectly. So now we've just uh, gotten some texturing done in a unique way. Um, these are the same objects that I used in the other demo videos that had stone and marble. So obviously there's, uh, uh, there's I can't even imagine how many different looks, very unique looks there are that you can achieve with this package. So uh, hopefully this helped you out and enjoy making stuff. Talk to me on the forums.